I just wanted to chat with you on this Sunday um, about one year ago. I know I've been sharing um, a little bit on my pages and my Instagram about what was happening in my life one year ago. One of the reasons why I want to share this is actually there's there's kind of two reasons for me. So one of the reasons is that I want to bring awareness to Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, CJD. And also I want to walk through this and process it myself. Um, it was traumatic. You know, I live with um, mental health issues and post-traumatic stress disorder anyway, not in regard to this. Um, so I just want to walk through this to see if it um, if it provides a little bit of healing. Um, you know, we've been talking about it in my family, about losing my mom. Um, but on this day, September 6th, a year ago, she was still here with us. So it's probably, this whole thing is going to be in parts because um, it's too difficult to tell the whole story all together. Um, so, so to start, one year ago today, my mom was um, taken to the hospital for an appointment and I believe that the doctor at the time really thought that um, they were going to be doing some rehab work with her and so they wanted to do an assessment about her um, her physical limitations and such so she did go for that appointment and partway through the appointment because she was failing every test um, partway through the appointment he said you know what you're gonna be if I have a bed upstairs you're gonna be admitted today um, she did not want to be admitted. So when I found that out, I um, packed her bag and took it down to the hospital. And at that point, she was already admitted in her room. So we had previously had many, many tests done. So she had seen a neurologist. She had uh, numerous CT scans, MRIs, blood tests. Everything was coming back. We were told it was clear. So when this doctor came into the room, um, and we are so thankful that we had him, that we actually got answers um, for what her illness was, because we wouldn't have otherwise. We were given a bunch of misdiagnosis, um, incorrect assumptions, and it just um, was very frustrating and very difficult. So when the doctor came into the room, he said, so the MRIs and the CTs she had have not been all clear. And we said, what? because we've been told that they were clear, that that's what the reports um, coming back were saying. And he said, there's something in the spinal fluid. And I said, like, what does that mean? And he suggested at the time um, that it could be a type of cancer. And so I thought, okay, you know, cancer can be dealt with. It's not, um, it's not what we would have wanted, but the other alternative misdiagnosis that we were given from a neurologist before was that she had hardening of the arteries and or strokes and you know she could do some recovery work too but she wasn't getting better with doing some recovery work so when the doctor told us this that day he said he was going to run more tests he was going to figure it out um, and she was in the right place we felt great that she was being admitted and finally um, really being taken seriously because y'all like she was sent to the ER a couple times because she had fallen so many times and they one doctor said like there's nothing wrong with you so we're gonna send you over to psych so she went over to psych and they made her feel so terrible about herself and so um, just so insecure that she just got up and she walked out and she said I'm never going back again and I 100% don't blame her. So the doctor told us that he would do a bunch of tests. They would um, be running all the same tests again, um, but that there was something showing up in her, um, in the spinal area. And he kept saying spinal fluid. Um, so he had seen tests that we were told were clear, weren't actually clear. And he was gonna run all the tests again, which was fantastic. So he left the room and my mom and my dad and I were there my mom was sitting on her bed and she burst into tears and she said to me you know if I'm gonna die please take me home 
And she didn't say it clearly like that because she was struggling with her speech. She knew exactly what she was seeing and thinking and wanting to say, but she couldn't verbalize it out clearly. So it was either came out stutterish or missing words, um, that sort of thing, um, which was very frustrating to her. Um, and I said to her that day, I said, like, mom, if you're dying, which you aren't today, we know that, you're in the right place um, to get the test to figure out what is wrong. Um, maybe it's treatable. If it is some type of maybe blood cancer or whatever it was, there are options for treatment. So I said, you're not dying today, but I said, if you are dying, then we will do our best to take you home. And when I said that, I didn't think that that was going to be what happened. I didn't think we were going to have to take her home to die. And that is what happened. It was my absolute privilege and honor to be able to walk through this with my mom. Um, we didn't know that day about CJD. We didn't know what was to come. We didn't know um, you know, just the devastating moments we would go through with her, but we knew something was very, very wrong, but I didn't think she was going to die. I didn't. Never would have guessed it in a million years. Um, some of the symptoms leading up to these months, so she was falling a lot, um, and significant falls. So just about a month, maybe five, six weeks prior to September 6th. Um, she had a terrible fall in the dining room um, and she hit her nose, she broke her nose and she got a gash up on her head and it just gushed, like just gushed of blood. So she had a concussion, her tooth went through her lip. Um, my father ended up calling 911 for her and then we went down to the hospital and you know, and this was, I don't know, probably the fifth or sixth time we were at the ER saying something is wrong with her. Just months prior, she was going to the gym every morning at 5 a.m. and taking care of my um, then two, two and a half year old nephew. Um, so this was not normal and we didn't feel heard. We didn't feel listened to. The doctor, um, the doctor that evening stitched her up, did a I believe it was a CT scan again said there's nothing wrong and and she can go home and um, the weird thing is that through all this she didn't have um, a ton of pain she didn't have like I felt like I was in more pain seeing her head um, and the next day I was exhausted and I just remember sitting on the couch with her and she's just smiling there and she's, you know, happy and she's drinking her chocolate chiller from um, Tim Hortons, which she loved. And, uh, and I'm like, mom, like, do you need a pill? Like, do you need some Tylenol or some pain meds? And she's like, no, I'm fine. And I'm like, my head, is, my head <laughs> is pounding. I feel sick. And I just lay down beside her and I just conked out for a couple hours. Um, so I was in more pain <laughs> than she was. Um, it was very, very odd, and I don't know if it was part of CJD um, or not, but she didn't have a ton of, of pain. Now, she had some arthritis issues, so she did have some medication for that, but um, she couldn't have just had a high pain threshold. Like, she had to have, like, that had to have been affecting part of her brain that processed, you know, um, pain. So last year, September 6th, my mom was still here. Um, we had been losing pieces of her for probably two months. Um, it was difficult to communicate with her. Um, it came to a point, probably mid-August, where she couldn't text anymore. Um, you couldn't really have good conversations with her on the phone, although she would try. She knew exactly what she wanted to say, but she couldn't say it. Um, and that is a symptom of CJD. Falling is a symptom of CJD. Um, the other thing was she was losing weight and 
she went to the gym every day um you know up until probably the end the middle of may no the the end of may she went to the gym every day and like she if she didn't if she didn't go to the gym and she ate a ton and she loved her sweets if she didn't go to the gym and was eating she would gain weight like it was just how her body is um and she wasn't going to the gym now and she was eating um a ton and like we were giving her stuff um you know i was bringing her stuff to munch on because she was losing weight she was cold all the time even through the summer she had the heat um, the heat pump going and other symptoms of hers were um, her writing was not like hers at all um, her writing um, she also had moments of um, inappropriate laughing which actually was um, a blessing because she would just laugh over really inappropriate things all the time and I found that that kind of lightened the situation because then I would just laugh because I would have no idea what was happening um, but she would laugh at and she laughed a lot anyway so and the way she laughed was still her um, so I kind of enjoyed that symptom but often with CJD, people will express um, what may seem to be inappropriate emotions for a situation. My mom was also having trouble um, walking. So her muscle strength in her legs was deteriorating. So just prior to her being admitted, um, just a couple days prior, I was babysitting my nephew at the house and um, my mom thought it was nighttime at 3.30 in the afternoon. So she'd gone to the washroom, came out and said, I need to go get ready for bed. And she had a hard time getting up the stairs, but she was, I mean, she was naturally, you know, determined and stubborn anyway. So she wasn't going to, you know, let this kind of stop her. Um, so she pulled herself upstairs and instead of fighting with her, you know, because of my work in mental health, I try to... I kind of know how to deal with some difficult situations so I never argued with her about anything unless it was going to put her in danger or something so I just went along with her it's nighttime you know my nephew thought it was great we're gonna put mammy to bed together um, so she went out we helped to get in her into her pajamas and we got her into bed and we tucked her in and you know my nephew thought it was a great game and we give Mamie we gave mammy kisses and sang her song and then we went downstairs and about 20 minutes later she got up again ready to start a new day we didn't know what was going on we didn't know if it was alzheimer's we didn't know if it was stroke we didn't know um, if it was something more we didn't know what was going on um, but we did know that something was very very wrong so this time last year my mom was admitted to hospital and we were determined to find out what was actually going on um, she hated being there. She wanted to go home so badly. And um, I thought that day that the doctor would figure it out. We'd have a treatment plan um, and we would continue to, to move along. We would take her home. She would um, have treatment, recover, figure it out, and everything would be okay. But sometimes life doesn't work that way. As much as you pray and hope and have faith and make good choices and give back but life doesn't always work out the way that you want and you have a choice about how to deal with it and what to do and you can only control your response to a situation so if you looked up this video because it is tagged with Creutzfeldt Jakob disease um, I'm going to include a link to a Facebook group right down here below and in the comments. It is a fantastic community that has provided so much support and though I only just recently started posting in the group, um, I've been following since, gosh, probably since we finally found out my mom was diagnosed with CJD. Um, and at this point last year we didn't know what it was. 
um, that didn't come until September 11th. So stay tuned to my videos. If you are dealing with this situation as well, um, make sure you do check out that Facebook group. There's tons of information and I find that lived experience. I want to talk to someone who's walked this road too. Um, so that is why I recommend joining that Facebook group. So again, it's going to be linked below and I'll also mention it in the comments too. Um, thanks for tuning in and I'm going to continue to kind of tell our story um, just so that you can kind of get more information about CJD and also just sharing about where I am mentally. It's a struggle the past, you know, year. Um, you know, it hasn't been a year yet since my mom passed, um, but it has been a year and then some since we started dealing with this issue. So I'm still sorting through grief. I'm having a lot of really bad days lately. Um, I don't know if it's actual depression or if it is um, grief. I have done a lot of recovery work, so I have a lot of tools and skills to be able to pull myself out. And I seem to be able to, you know, get myself up and get showered, but it takes a really long time. And I've just been really struggling without my mom. You know, I still can't believe most days that she's not here. Like, and I'm like, when is it going to click in to me that she's not here? I. I don't know. I mean, she was such a huge part of our family and, um, you know, so many people say, well, you know, you're just like your mom. And I mean, some ways, yeah, in some ways we were complete opposites, which was why we bumped heads a lot. Um, but I know like that she is around and I know that, um, she was proud of me and she cares. Like when people say that, you know, I'm like, duh, I know my mom, I know she was proud of me. Um, but it's really hard being here without her. Um, I'm actually staying at uh, my parents' house right now with my dad. He just had major surgery about two weeks ago. Um, that was quite sudden. And so he is recovering beautifully. Um, and we're just kind of waiting for results and stuff from the surgery to figure out what happens next. But having this happening when everything happened last year is kind of triggering for me. It's been really, really hard and especially being in the house again because I moved back to um, stay in the house when my, mom, when my mom took sick last year um, because we did bring her home to die. And that's gonna be, um, I'll share more info on that in upcoming videos. So grief is, grief is a struggle. Like grief is not the same every day. Um, it can come and take you down and hold you underwater and then spit you up and you feel like you've been run over by a Mack truck. It is hard to kind of get things done. Um, and also with this whole pandemic on top of it, it has been really, really difficult. So thanks for checking out my video. If you like it, um, click the like button below. Um, and if you are a YouTuber or have an account, please click subscribe. Um, and you can also hit the bell notification so you know when I do upload a new video. Um, thanks for checking it out and I will talk to you soon.